Hello, I am Bruno Anthony, Professor and Vice Chair of Psychology for the Department of Psychiatry and Chief of Psychology for the Pediatric Mental Health Institute at Children's Hospital. Today I am really pleased to be able to talk about our work to develop, implement, and test our program aimed at enhancing youth suicide prevention in primary care. I lead this effort through Partners for Children's Mental Health a training and research center focused on increasing quality of youth mental health services. As you probably know, suicide is a public health crisis for our nation's youth. The slide shows that it is a leading cause of death for youth ages 10 to 24 across the United States. There has been a 60% increase in the rate of suicide in this age group between 2007 and 2018 and over the past several years, suicide rates in youth have continued to worsen. Of note, these rates are highest in the Western United States. Primary care practices are on the front lines of this crisis. They are uniquely positioned to identify at-risk youth. About 80% of youth who die by suicide have visited a healthcare setting shortly before death. 45% have seen a primary care provider. But sadly, even though 90% of those who died by suicide had a diagnosable mental health condition, only 20% had contact with a mental health provider in the recent past. The goal of our program is to increase the knowledge, confidence, and skills of primary care providers to identify youth experiencing thoughts of suicide and, most importantly, keep them safe until they are connected to community support. As we recently reported in the journal Pediatrics, interventions for suicide prevention in outpatient medical settings have shown promising results with fewer ED referrals and hospitalizations for suicidality and increased connection to mental health supports. The training component of our program is based on the Zero Suicide Prevention Pathway endorsed by the American Academy of Pediatrics. The pathway involves suicide screening, suicide assessment, and care plan development. To screen, we use the Ask Suicide Screening Questions tool, or ASQ. This is a brief tool containing only four questions. A yes answer on any question results in a positive screen result. This then flags a patient for further risk assessment with the brief suicide safety assessment. This assessment was specifically developed for pediatricians and does not require extensive training. It involves interviews with the youth and caregiver and results in estimates of risk for suicide. As the slide shows, if the risk is low, disposition is referral, education, and follow-up. If the risk is high, disposition is transferred to a crisis center or ER. If the youth is deemed at intermediate risk, Developing a care plan is indicated, which involves four components. The first is creating a safety plan with the youth and family. This does not have to take a lot of time, but gives hope. It reinforces that suicidal thoughts come and go. It focuses on what should be done versus what not to do, and it enhances self-efficacy and a sense of control. One of the most important things to include in the care plan is a mean safety discussion. Remember, if guns are used, 90% of suicide attempts end in death, compared to less than 5% if medicines or drugs are used. 85% of youth who complete suicide with a gun use their parent's gun or gun from home. Another key aspect of the care plan is identifying referrals for appropriate level of support in the community and follow-up telephone calls which review the care plan addressing barriers to referral such as stigma, discrimination, and family readiness. Our training has been quite successful. For example, we provide quarterly five-session ECHO series covering the different steps of the pathway. More than 200 providers have participated. This slide shows that attendees reported significant increases in confidence from pre to post around the different components of the pathway. 
Also, almost 95% reported that they are very likely or likely to build suicide prevention care into their practice in the next six months. However, we know that even with increased skills, many factors get in the way of implementing the pathway. Setting up the program in a practice is often challenging. Therefore, we offer support, which we call practice facilitation. We help integrate screening and assessment into the workflow. We provide clinical coaching in the different parts of the pathway, and we help with data usage. We have found encouraging results in terms of the use of the pathway in partner practices. After a few months of support, practices are screening at almost 90% of all well visits. About 9% of adolescents have screened positive though, and of those, 30% or so were assigned an intermediate risk level, which requires further assessment and safety care. So, in terms of next steps, we continue to offer training and implementation support for providers interested in incorporating a suicide prevention pathway into their practice. If you are interested in finding out more about the program, the email is provided at the bottom of this slide. Also, we are excited that we have just been notified that we were funded by the National Institute of Mental Health to conduct the first study to test practice facilitation as a strategy to support youth suicide prevention in primary care. It is gratifying to us that since 2020, our partnering clinics have detected more than 200 youth experiencing thoughts of suicide. We are eager to continue this work to address this critical national problem.